Welcome into an emergency edition. We'll call it On the Beat Live Emergency Pod. Phil Longo to Wisconsin, North Carolina's offensive coordinator for the last four years under Mac Brown. Moving on to the Big Ten, I'll start with Ross Martin. Ross, what in the world, man? Big news <laughs> here on a, I guess, a Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, I mean, I, the destination is surprising. Um, yeah, you know, this is not very sourced or anything, but, you know, we heard a little Texas A&M rumors. We had heard Auburn rumors, just about message board stuff, the stuff on Twitter and, and that everybody else see, sees. And then um, Bruce Feldman breaks it Longo to uh, Wisconsin under Luke Fickle coming from Cincinnati, and he mentioned that Longo has a connection with Fickle. Um, you know, kind of a fresh start. Big Ten, more money, maybe can win a little bigger there. But, you know, leaving Drake May is surprising, I think. Um, and that, that's all I got, you know. Uh, I, I enjoyed covering Longo. I had a relationship with him for sure. Uh, I hate to see him leave. Um, I thought he was great at UNC. I mean, people are going to talk about his red zone and, you know, not having success in recent weeks. But uh, overall, some of the most prolific offenses in UNC history with Sam Howell and Drake May. I mean, think about that year with, Michael Carter, Javante Williams, Daz Newsom, and Dami Brown. I mean, that, that offense is awesome. Of course, last year, uh, 2022, this year was great as well. So uh, four years of Longo. He came from Ole Miss, uh, so SEC, and now and then UNC, and now Big Ten with uh, Wisconsin. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, that's all I got. What were your initial thoughts, uh, Viplis? Yeah, the – the one thing I, I guess I'll start with saying is I don't think the, the destination when you're looking at it is that much of a surprise. Um, just knowing the, like the inner workings of, of the Longo family, like uh, his wife, Tanya Longo is from Duran, Wisconsin, which is only two and a half, three hours outside of uh, Madison, Wisconsin. So I think that that's probably the connection to why he goes from an OC at one school to an OC at another school. But I think the, and this is no inside information, but I think the, the dynamic between Mac Brown and, and Phil Longo kind of felt just really off this entire year where without any context, if you just listen to Mac Brown after, after games or during the week, when talking about the offense and the defense, you would think, the defense was the one that was in the top 25 and the offense was the one in the one tens or, or the one twenties where, you know, the, there was always something to nitpick about the offense and really propping up the defense. Now you, you don't really know what's going on behind the scenes and, and why Mac Brown kind of approached it that way. Um, but yeah, it feels like now that you're looking back at it with perspective that Phil Longo's offense was a bit underappreciated during the Mac Brown 2.0 tenure where for, for as much as people can complain about certain things that he did inside the red zone, the reason why this team isn't where they want to be right now isn't because of the offense. And in fact, like the, the strength of this team under Mac Brown 2.0 has been the quarterback, Sam Howell, Drake May, Phil Longo has coached them both. It's crazy how it works, you know. I, I've been on, you know, with Ross and Adam there at the press conferences um, only partially most of this season, and I saw the same dynamic going on there. Jason, I'm going to bring you in. Um, and folks, listen to this. Shout out to the 300-plus. Uh, yeah, inside Carolina and the message boards, people matter, and they do care. Um, we are mighty. <laughs> so they are they are mighty here. This is like uh, the, the WREL's news. More people watching this than watching the regular news. But Jason, Longo moving on. Um, I, I guess the the surprise for everybody is you've got a Heisman Trophy candidate legit in the bag, and you move on to Wisconsin. Now the transfer portal changes everything. Who knows who plays where? But Drake May will be at North Carolina. Is that a surprise to you to move on with that type of a? Uh, bullet in your gun so to speak next season no uh though a couple of you know that uh i talked to someone la uh what two weeks ago now who'd said to expect to see longo leave after this year uh now what i was told is that to expect him to go to texas state now the texas state job was not open at the time <laughs> so uh you know then when the texas state job opened i was like oh wow um, there must have really been some back channel stuff already that my 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 person uh, the person I talked to knew about, but apparently that was not going to happen. 
and so Longo took the next best thing. But he was, I, as far as I can tell, he was out of here no matter what. Uh, and I think Taylor hit the hit the uh, hit it right on the nose that from all that I could see, both in terms of sideline interaction and in terms of press conference stuff, uh, that situation in terms of head coach and offensive coordinator had soured. And, uh, and I think it was a situation where similar to what happened toward the end with Jay Bateman last year, uh, basically it was probably not going to work for those two to, 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 uh, it was, there was going to have to be a mutual parting basically for, for, uh, for them to, uh, to, to move on. And, and so I'm not surprised at all. Uh, hmm. and I think this has been in the works for probably, probably longer than three weeks, probably longer than that. Uh, and one, one other thing that I'm going to add is I think a factor here is that North Carolina's defensive struggles and the overall lack of toughness inside the football facility is noted and noticed. And uh, I think whether justly or unjustly, uh, Phil Longo and the approach that, uh, that, that they've taken on the offensive side in particular – uh, have received some of the blame for that in, uh, in internally. And so I think, uh, I think just speculating that that's a, that's a, a factor there. Uh, so I do wonder, I mean, Tommy, you and I talked the last game, uh, uh, the last post game with, with Buck that the offense really looked completely different after that Wake Forest game. And I start to wonder, like, how much, how much was this already in the works? Even you know th this sort of thing that things had already like okay, things are going to separate, and that that impacted preparation and so on the last few weeks. That's just me speculating, and I don't know if that's irresponsible at this stage or not. Uh, I think you know overall, Phil Longo deserves a lot of credit for what he did in terms of helping turn this program around uh, and bringing it a lot of. Uh, a lot of attention for putting up major offensive numbers. And he was a big factor in recruiting some really good quarterbacks on the campus. So uh, I think that's, that, that needs to be said as he, as he moves on to, to Wisconsin and, and he deserves a lot of that credit. Yeah. And, and Jason was kind of talking about the offense and the defense kind of needing more of that, like symbiotic type relationship. And, and that got me thinking uh, when I first heard him say that on, I think it was the day after podcast. And you look at every year Longo's been a offensive coordinator at the power five level, Ole Miss and Carolina and the defensive, uh, the total defense, it's been 111th, 115th, 105. 68 was kind of an anomaly with that with Jay Bateman 97th 117 and then his offensive ratings have been 21 9 12 5 12 15 so the the offense has been really really good but the defense it's almost like the defense can't figure out what it's doing and when when Jason does talk about that you, you kind of have to wonder how much of that does play into the fact that Carolina can't field a good defense yeah and 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 i'll be i'll be frank uh both of the last two defensive staffs have felt that they've not gotten enough support from the offense to help them get better in practice and i suspect that it's one thing when jay bateman who's a young coordinator uh and that that staff uh are asking for things in practice and then ultimately, you know, on the way out saying, look, I mean, we've got to be able to do this if we're going to have a good defense. It's another thing if Gene Chizik comes in and agrees, given his experience. And I suspect that that's a factor here. So uh, again, I don't want to open too much of a, of a, of a can of worms there. And this is not a situation where, you know, one coat, one assistant got another assistant fired or anything like that. I don't think there's any indication of that. But I, I think what Vip just said is it, it, that that is something that has been noticed within the within the football facility of like, look, we can put up top five offensive numbers, but what good is that if the consequence of that is that we can't be above 111th in defense? 
And when that's been multiple programs, uh, you start to get it, you start to get at the, at, at that toughness question and you have to build toughness in practice. Uh, and actually we should link, there was a, a, a someone, someone sent me this, uh, early this week, a clip of, uh, Michael Lombardi talking about, uh, toughness. And actually the interesting thing is he referenced, uh, he referenced Ryan day in Ohio state exactly like I had on the, on the, on the, uh, day after podcast and said, look, when I watched that, uh, Ohio state, Michigan game and Ryan days interviewed at halftime, he's like, I, I, I didn't think they had any real shot in the second half because that's not a tough football team. And I don't think Ryan day knows how to coach a tough football team. And then he laid it out of look at Ryan day and what they do offensively and all of this. And you can't develop toughness as a team. And you're going to wind up having problems defensively if that's all you do. And honestly, I think that's the, that's the sort of thing that we're, we're, I, I suspect that Mac Brown and, and, and the decision makers in, in Chapel Hill will be trying to evaluate how to get a more uh, balanced approach coming into next year as they move on. And I do wonder what's going to happen in terms of fit at, uh, at Wisconsin with this. Cause I know fickle is really, really big on coaching tough football. And that might mean that they're going to have to, uh, to, you know, move around and hybridize a little bit there. But, uh, but I think that that video by uh, Lombardi is well worth watching. Hey, there's breaking news here. Feldman's also reporting that Jack Bicknell is is leaving to join um, Longo in Wisconsin. I was afraid of that. That's no bueno. He's he's a good coach. Uh, UNC offensive line coach Jack Bicknell Jr. also expected to join the Wisconsin staff as a Badgers new O line coach. He and a new OC Phil Longo coach together at Old Miss and UNC. So so Bicknell, you know, not even a full twelve months in Chapel Hill. Um, you know, Feldman's rarely wrong. So. Big news there. I mean, that's too. I was afraid of that. And two important coaches. Good. You saw some improvement in the offensive line. So big news there. I mean, the Wisconsin thing. You know, there's. You know, it's a. It's a good. Play. You can win the the Big Ten West there. They're still doing divisions. It's a big time school. You can recruit nationally there. You got a new coach, a young new coach. Um, that's a defensive guy, I believe. Right. Yeah. Right, Jason. Isn't. Is it fickle defense? Yeah, yeah, he's he's totally a defensive guy. Yeah, so you'll have you know Falongo completely run the offense. Um, yeah, he's very he's very been very hands off with the offense. He's had some good coordinators at, at Cincinnati, and he's generally given them uh, a lot of a lot of uh, room to to do their thing. Again, it'll be interesting to see how that how that marriage works. But yeah, and you know football's first there as well. A um, little bit different culture as well. Yeah, that's what I was so. going to say. The, the... I, I think the football culture around Chapel Hill has been getting a, a lot better since Mac Brown 2.0. Um, you just have to look at the student section and how much more um, interest there is in the overall football team. But you go to a game in Chapel Hill, you go to a game in Madison, Wisconsin, you see them do jump around. You, 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 you won't think they're any – the two jump arounds aren't any anywhere uh, comparable with each other. Yeah, I'm sitting here updating the breaking – Scroller at the bottom, UNC OC Phil Longo and OL coach Jack Bicknell Jr. to Wisconsin. A lot of folks in the chat have asked about uh, potential candidates. Uh, this is one reason to be on Tar Pit Premium Message Board. Another place that matters is Mac. Uh, Randy McGeorge has got a, a laundry list of potential OL candidates, or excuse me, OC candidates listed. I mean, you got a list. Yeah, you got Seth Luttrell. You've got it on down uh, the line. Of course, Seth Luttrell at North Carolina um, back during the Larry Fedora era. Ross, uh, what else can we talk about here? We got 600, close to 600 people here. Yeah. I mean, folks were concerned or really demanding the defensive staff being be shaken up. And here we have uh, the offensive line and the offensive coordinator moving on to Wisconsin after a year oh. um, that is – you know, it quarter, sort of soured, but they still won nine games. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we can move to, to candidates. And I'll, I'll say this. I mean, you know, I'm not going to – not too many names are gonna, that I'm going to drop here, but uh, it's a desirable job. And UNC should be able to go out and get a premier offensive coordinator from a Power 5 team. I mean, or a group of five that's had a tons of success. Uh, the hot, Think of the hottest names, the, the best offenses the last couple of years. Those are the guys that Mac Brown should target. You have the best, second best quarterback returning in the country in Drake May. That's a pretty good pitch. Come coach Drake May. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you have, 
I think you should return it, it, most of their offensive line, if not all of it. Um, you know, Carolina is a is a desirable brand. Uh, it's launched. You know, Seth Trail got a head job. You know, it's a launched a lot of uh, offense coordinators to bigger jobs. Um, Blake Anderson as well. It's a great place to raise kids, uh, family. You know, it's a desirable place. There's a lot of positives here. So, Mac Brown should go out and, and get the hottest name. Um, you know, Seth, Seth Sutrell is going to be a big name. Um, Graham Harrell, who's at Wisconsin, was someone West they, Virginia, West Virginia, West Virginia, West Virginia. Sorry, someone they tried to hire earlier. Jason, what, are there any other names that come to mind? Because I, I, I'm not versed in that. I'm trying to get a hot board ready, but I'm not. Yeah, I, we'll, we'll have to name. talk off air a little bit about that. I, I do think one other name on Max list that is really intriguing to me is Kevin Johns, uh, who's the current coordinator at Duke, and was a mm-hmm. part of their big turnaround this year. Uh, I'm not sure if he'd be willing to make this make make the drive across uh, you know, across the rivalry just because of what that looks like in terms of coaching circles and all of that after one year. But I'd really cl- I'd really uh, consider going uh, going at him hard, uh, partly because uh, how much should I say here? Um, so Kevin Johns was uh, was offensive coordinator under Mike Norvell at uh, at Memphis and runs a very similar scheme to what they run down there. It's a very quarterback friendly scheme, but it's a tough scheme. You're going to run the football and you're going to do some things that are going to, going to help your defense be tough as well. Uh, and that's the sort of thing I, I, I suspect. Um, that, I mean, I think there's two different routes here. One is I think if Mac wants to take kind of the easy route with the, you know, I'm going to hire uh, who is the defensive coordinator. He tried to hire initially um, Greg, Robinson. Greg Robinson. I'm going to take, the the, Greg Robinson. I'm going to take the, the, the late Greg Robinson route. I'm going to, I'm going to hire Greg Robinson. Cause you know, that's the easy one. I've talked to him before. Uh, then, you know, probably Graham Harrell is going to be your next coordinator. Uh, but I, 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 I'm curious. I really think it'll be interesting to see if Mac ends up targeting somebody with a little bit more, um, a little bit more balance, a little bit more of a balanced approach than, you know, he came in saying he was going to, he wanted the Lincoln Riley offense or something close to it. I'm wondering whether or not we're going to see a little bit of a shift there just to try to get, try to help the defense out a little bit, uh, a little bit more and, and provide some balance in the program uh, and something that's going to be going to build a little toughness. I, I'm going to be all ears here, but yeah, there's, we'll, we'll put together a hot board with a lot to talk about off air i'm sure i I was laughing i was laughing at first because you said you you don't know if kevin johns is going to want to make the drive but then i didn't realize what you meant at first i was going to say it's only another what five minutes maybe yeah Yeah. Yeah. same house he he does not have to move he wouldn't have to move i mean he'd literally be able to stay exactly where he is and just you know drive across across town the question really has to do with, you know, is he, 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 he was hired by, by Elko. Elko's a good guy to coach for. Mac Brown has a reputation as someone who's good to coach for. And that's another part of this pitch. Uh, so, you know, is he going to turn his back on <laughs> a rival that just hired him? I mean, that's personally kind of a hard thing to do, but I'd look, you know, I'd like to see someone uh, in say the Brom, uh, uh, tree in terms of offense, that kind of thing. If I were doing the hire, uh, the the you know the Mike Norvell kind of tree because of again the, the combination of quarterback friendly and toughness in both of those systems. Uh, there's there's a number of good names out there, and and I think again, North Carolina's offense and the t- the talent that that whoever they they uh, bring in is going to be working with is going to be a really attractive hire for someone. So yeah. Uh, my, the one concern, and this is in one of the questions here, my concern is how much does this affect Drake May, who said, you know, sort of tepidly when he was asked, you know, are you going to come, come back to North Carolina? He said, well, that's my intention. Uh, and that's not a, you know, yes, absolutely, I'm, you know, all in. I don't expect Drake May to go anywhere. But I do wonder, you know, how much of who they hire for the next OC is the sort of thing that, you know, if I'm Drake May, I'm concerned about that, too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a great situation to walk into as an offensive coordinator. Um, but with the portal, and I'm, we're not speculating on that at all, but with the portal, it's the reality. I'm seeing, I'm seeing comments, not Bill O'Brien. I'm seeing Bill O'Brien and make him coach and waiting. No, no. <laughs> it's going to be quite interesting. Carolina needs to hire an OC and now offensive line coach and perhaps more down the line. One thing we will do is we'll be back uh, tomorrow night, Thursday night at 9 p.m. with a live show. 
um, to sort of, I guess, pontificate on this more and uh, discuss it. Ross, anything left? Anything broken since Jason was talking? <laughs> I, was, I was told that I, I just got a text uh, that more coaches might be leaving. <laughs> so, but that's from kind of like a God, like, who is staying? Kind of like a fan thing. But. Unbelievable! It is a. It's called the silly season for a reason. Now you have the transfer portal and coaches moving around at all North Carolina football in flux at the moment here on December seventh, twenty twenty two. Taylor, anything left before we get out of here? No, it's just going to say it feels like if we stay on here five more minutes, something else is going to break. I know, like I don't we're going to hang have to. Up. I'm we're gonna have to run back and and put the headsets back on. You would you would, you would imagine the new OC would probably pick bring along an, an offensive line coach. I mean that's come, something to keep in mind there. You probably kind of hire two people that know each other because they work so closely together. That's something to think about. Um, so yeah, J- Jason, what would your opinion be on if you bring a, a new offensive coordinator? And Carolina already has for the time being, at least. Porter in place, Galloway in place, um, Lily in place. If the if you're interviewing an OC and the OC kind of wants control over, you know, his entire staff, I feel like that's that's somewhere Carolina has run into trouble in the past with with this Mac Brown hire. If you're Carolina and you're hiring an OC, how much does that kind of weigh into your decision in in terms of you know who you keep and who you don't? Wow, that's a hard question. Um, and, and it's a hard question because I really believe in loyalty as, as, as a coach. Uh, and you, you, you don't let, guy, let guys go lightly. These are livelihoods. This is not just about jobs you know, to win football games. These are livelihoods. At the same point, on the, other, on, the, on the flip side, I also believe that a coordinator has to have control of his staff and has to uh, – has to believe in the guys that he's working with and there has to be synergy there. So what I would be, what I would do is I would say to the coordinator, you have ultimate autonomy on who you keep and who you don't. So you come in, you interview each of these guys, you talk shop with them and figure out, and and you're going to basically interview the position coaches to see who you want to keep and who you don't. Uh, I think you have to do that uh, in order to, to make sure you have, the right synergy. If you're, in, if you're hiring a guy and he's like, no, I, I, I like those guys. Great. But what you cannot have is a coordinator come in who feels like there's guys on staff that he really can't trust or can't work with or have been around longer and, and may be able to undermine him that you can't have that situation. So it has to be a situation where your coordinator at least has the, the capacity to say, look, I, I, I'm willing to keep these two guys, but that guy's got to go. Uh, I think you, I think you have to do that. Yeah, I mean synergy and all that. Somebody keeps mentioning Garrett Riley, uh, current TCU offense coordinator. He's busy at the moment. I mean, he he would be a good one, <laughs> but yeah. he's got some things coming up. I mean, a lot of names. Get on Tar Pit Premium message boards. Check out Max Thread. Check out Ross's reporting. We'll be back next week. Anything left? I, I'm, I, I like Taylor said. I hesitate to hang up. Yeah, I mean, I'll call y'all right back. I'll say this. I mean, they got a bowl game to play in, in two weeks. So who's calling the plays? You know, you're losing your offensive line coach, you're losing Longo. I mean, they're not staying around. They'll be in they'll be in Madison tomorrow, start recruiting, you gotta think, or you know, at least a couple of days. So who is calling plays? That's something we'll have to figure out. Who's who's stepping up and being the offensive line coach? Remember when um <sighs> Cyril's left the day before training camp started? They uh that the guy on the Kevin staff, Donald. Donnelly. Kevin Donnelly coached uh, the O line for like a week. So, but uh, you know, there might be some staffer who calls plays that we don't really know. Um, and I would add that Long Lonnie Galloway has has probably been UNC's best recruiter uh, over the last four years. I would say overall, I mean, great wide receiver recruiter had a, had a role in Travis Shaw's recruitment. Um, pro- probably the best recruiter on UNC staff right now. The wide receivers coach for UNC. Yeah. There is no off season. <laughs> it's the truth. And inside Carolina, what a slogo, what a relevant term. 600 and plus, 620 plus people in here. Ross Martin, Jason Staples, Taylor Vipolis. I'm Tommy Ashley. It's been the Inside Carolina. It's an emergency pod for sure. 
who knows when we'll be back, but we'll definitely be back tomorrow night, 9 o'clock, um, with a football roundtable to discuss a little bit of this and more. Join us. Johnny T-shirt, johnnytshirt.com. Peace, boys. This is fine.